In previous lecture, we discussed what is mitosis. Today, we will be discussing the role of meiosis. What is meiosis? For this lecture, I will assume that you have watched that previous lecture of mitosis. If you haven't, please watch that first because it will be very easy for you to understand meiosis if you know what is mitosis. So let's start start the today's lecture. Hello, I am Dr. Azaz from MedicoVisual.com. Welcome to this visual lecture. So you know from the previous lecture that this is a sperm and this is an ovum, and they will fuse together through the process of fertilization to form a single cell called zygote, right? And you know sperm has 23 chromosomes, right? and ovum also has 23 chromosome when they will combine 23 plus 23 they will form 46 chromosomes so zygote has how many chromosomes 46 46 chromosomes right now from zygote onwards what happens that uh, zygote undergoes a type of cell division that is called mitosis and with the help of mitosis zygote forms first two daughter cells then from two to four four to eight eight to sixteen and so on ultimately a complete multi-trillion celled organism is formed a complete human adult human is formed and interestingly from uh, through the through the process of mitosis the daughter cells have same number of chromosomes that is zygote has 46 chromosomes and all the subsequent cells that are formed from mitosis up to this complete organism all of them has how many chromosomes 46, 46 chromosomes so same number of chromosomes is there now this organism if he is a male he will form sperms in his testes if she is a female she will form ovum in her ovaries right so here now all of his or her cells they have 46 chromosome including those cells that are precursor of these gametes but these gametes will have half number of chromosomes than that of those precursor cells right so from 46 chromosomes in the precursor cell of these gametes 23 chromosomed cell sperm or, or ovum is formed and that is due to presence of meiosis right so meiosis is what kind of cell division it is a reduction division as per chromosomes is concerned it, it is a reduction division that is chromosome number is half with the help of meiosis why so why don't he or she just forms uh, the gametes with the help of mitosis so let's assume that gametes are formed with the help of mitosis then let's see what happens in that imaginary scenario so now what will happen that let's suppose mitosis is undergoing so 46 chromosomes gametes will be formed that is sperm and ovum will have how many chromosomes 46 chromosomes right when they will fuse they will have 46 plus 46 how many chromosomes in zygote 92, 92 chromosomes then in the complete human each cell will have 92 chromosome and when again this will divide when again this will uh, he or she will form gametes it will have again 92 92 and 92 plus 92 is I don't know what is the figure I'm not good at math but the point is that up till now if uh, there if meiosis never existed up till now we might have trillions of chromosomes in our cells so it should not happen like that that is why meiosis exists that is the beauty of meiosis that it keeps the number of chromosomes constant among species humans have 46 chromosomes some other species will have a particular number of chromosomes and that remain constant generation after generation 
right this is the this is the beauty of meiosis another benefit another significance of meiosis that we will discuss later that it imparts the genetic variance among the different members of a species right so let's talk about meiosis here i will like to tell you that this 46 46 chromosome is called diploid and when its number is halved that is in sex cells in gametes sperm and ovum its number is halved and that is called haploid so all of our body cells they are diploid number of chromosomes they have diploid chromosomes while gametes are haploid so meiosis it consists of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 so here is a cell which has to undergo meiosis which cell is this is it any cell of body somatic cell yes what do you think no no it is not yes you are right it it is a cell that is precursor of gamete hmm. this is a cell that has to form either sperm or ovum so meiosis occur in only in sex cells while mitosis occur in all the body cells all the somatic cells of our body so from previous knowledge you know what is prophase in prophase of mitosis you might have heard that chromosomes are formed firstly the dna is in the form of chromatin thre uh, thin thread like structure during interphase it is in the form of thin thread like structure the chromatin chromatin further condenses to form chromosomes in prophase so here is the start of prophase and all the chromosomes they are now condensed right now each of our cells including this precursor cell gamete precursor cell it will have how many chromosomes yes 46. 46 chromosomes and out of this 46 chromosomes 23 chromosomes are those chromosomes that came from sperm and 23 are those that came from mm -hmm. ovum 23 that came from sperm are that cells that chromosome that came from father and 23 from ovum are those that came from mother right now you can see from this diagram actually i should have shown 46 but of course that is not possible so i am only showing six chromosomes that represents total 46 chromosomes right so here you can see some of the chromosomes they are quite similar to each other in shape for example here you can see these two they look similar to each other right and they also look similar to each other let's suppose this is chromosome number one let's assume this is chromosome number one right and in this chromosome number one they are in the form of pair this one pink one it came from mother and this came from father blue one right now they are not exactly alike but their gene, genes are same i mean for example here at this place it may code for here there may be a gene for eye color then on maternal chromosome here there will also be the gene for eye color if here let's suppose there is a gene for hair color here also there must be a gene for hair color so all genes are present at the same location or loci right and all genes are same but their phenotypic expression may be different right for example this maternal chromosome here this eye color gene may code for let's say black eye color but this pre pre uh, paternal gene it may code for blue eye color so gene is same but their phenotypic expression may or may not be same right so but so these are actually what they are called these are called homologous pair so we have how many homologous pair yes 
23 yes we have 23 homologous pair 23 from father 23 from mother in mitosis there is no clear cut there is no concept or demarcation of homologous chromosome that is only important in meiosis we will discuss details later so these are homologous chromosome that are homologous to each other right one exception to this rule they look like each other but one exception to this rule is sex chromosome that is x and y chromosomes 22 we have 22 somatic chromosomes and 23rd pair is sex chromosome they are x and y chromosome they are homologous but they are not exactly alike their shape is quite different from each other their genes are also different from each other but some part of their genes they are same so they are actually homologous chromosome they undergo crossing over as well but not the whole chromosome a part of that chromosome undergo crossing over what is crossing over we are now just going to discuss that so you are clear about homologous chromosomes concept these two chromatids are they are sister chromatids let's put this chromatid and this chromatid they are sister chromatids connected to each other with centromere. centromere yes right now they are exactly alike for example here the gene will be let's say eye color gene and here is also eye color gene here also eye color gene and here as well now here if eye color gene is coding for blue eye color here there must also be the gene that is coding for blue eye color but here they, that may be different in this maternal chromosome it may code for let's say black eye color and here also for let's say black eye color so these are sister chromatids of the same chromosome and these are sister chromatids for another chromosome these two chromosomes are homologous to each other mm -hmm. but chromatids the this chromatid and this chromatid they are sister chromatids are non sister chromatids non -sister yes chromatids. they are non sister chromatids mm. these two are sister chromatids these two are sister chromatids but this and this and this and this these are non sister mm. chromatids so are you really clear about the concept of homologous chromosomes and sister and non sister chromatids yes this is very important concept in meiosis so let's move forward So I have shown only a single pair of homologous chromosomes rest I have removed for the sake of simplicity. Now these sister chromatids not chromatids these uh, homologous chromosomes they come close to each other and then they come to lie on the top of each other right and then there is a special bond that is formed between them. This is not just an emotional bond that is being formed between them but actually there is a there is a thread like structure that is formed in between them there are certain proteins that form the, this thread like structure between these homologous chromosomes what is this uh, this pairing this pairing of homologous chromosomes is called synapses and this thread like structure that is formed is called synaptonemal complex what it is called synaptonemal complex. complex nemal mean thread synapses mean pairing synaptonemal complex so now what they are doing they are undergoing synapses they have formed synapses and that is demarcated by presence of synaptonemal complex so after they have came very close to each other lying on the top of each other then they will do something that a part of their body i mean not body a part of their structure that is xj right what happens here is that you can see the this part of maternal chromosome it is transferred to this paternal chromosome here and this part of paternal chromosome it is shifted it is exchanged to this part of 
maternal chromosome so they are doing something to exchange their body parts right clear now something interesting happens here now synaptonemal complex is lost and now they try to separate from each other but when even when they are separated from each other they are still attached at this part at which they exchange the material so this exchange of material is called crossing over but it is called crossing over and when synaptonemal complex is um, disappears when synaptonemal complex disappears and they try to separate from each other till that part is attached with each other and it forms a cross like structure you can see here it is forming a cross like structure clear mm. this cross like structure that is formed it is called what it is called it is called chiasma so what is this chiasma so these terms you must be very clear about what is synapsis when they come close to each other they pair with each other this is synapsis when they exchange a part of their structure a part of their genome this is called crossing over mm. and after crossing over has occurred and synaptonemal complex has lost they try to separate from each other but their part with which they exchange they are still attached this is called this part is called chiasma, chiasma. so you should not mix these terms clear mm. this is chiasma then what is chiasmata let's bring other chromosomes here by now they have also done something to exchange their parts right so they are back after doing something at molecular level and here you can see what is this thing chiasma chiasma and here is also chiasma and here is also chiasma usually in a single pair single homologous chromosomes pair there are more than one chiasma for example you can see here is a chiasma and here is a chiasma that is called as a whole it is called chiasmata formation chiasmata is plural term right it is simple english word that is plural and chiasma if we talk about a single single this thing single cross like the structure we will call it chiasma mm. so chiasma is singular chiasmata is plural plural and this process is called chiasmata formation mm. right so up till now you are you should be very clear about this term should we move forward yes so this was prophase right all these things happened in prophase and another thing that happened in prophase is that nuclear membrane it also disappears so that uh, subsequent phases becomes easier it becomes easier to align these chromosomal pair on metaphase plate we will discuss that later so let's review what happens in prophase of meiosis 1 or prophase 1 of meiosis what happens first chromatin condenses further to form chromosome then homologous chromosomes pair up to form to what this is called synapses then they exchange their genetic material what is it it is called crossing, crossing over. over then they try to separate with each other but they are still connected at the parts where crossing over has occurred this is called chiasma chiasma and during synapses the thread like structure that is formed is synaptonemal complex. complex right and finally nuclear membrane disappears so all these things they are ha they happen in prophase and interestingly you can see still they are attached with each other especially at these chiasma chiasmata points mm. right let's move forward now all these chromosome chromosomal pair homologous chromosomes pair they are arranged in the midline and this is called arrangement on mitotic plate they arrange on midline and centrosome from centrosome spindle fibers arises that attaches to kinetochore 
right and the other non kinato core spindle fibers also arise right they are called non kinato core spindle fibers or polar spindle fibers now here the interesting thing is that these two will act as a single unit these two chromatids and these two will also act as a single unit and here kinato core fibers when they will when these kinato core fibers will shorten as it happens in mitosis when they will shorten they will not pull a single sister chromatid but they will pull these two chromatids hold this chromosome and hold this chromosome they will pull them right so what happens in next phase the in this phase it starts that kinato core fiber they start to shorten and these non kinato core fibers they will elongate they will lengthen up so what will happen these these five uh, these chromosomes homologous chromosome this beautiful couples they will separate from each other unfortunately or fortunately they will they will be separated from each other and due to lengthening of polar fiber cell will elongate so what will happen let's see so here what happens they are separated from each other now in this at this point you can see in metaphase they were still connected with each other right at chiasma but in anaphase the chiasma is lost chiasma is lost now homologous chromosomes are separate from each other right now what is so interesting here is that now the chromosomes they are not they are not the same this chromosome it has some part from this chromosome paternal chromosome and this chromosome also has some part from this maternal chromosome similarly here you can see now what you can see here is that we have recombinant chromosomes that are formed chromosomes with a newer combination chromosomes are not the same as that they were before now these chromosomes are recombinant chromosomes and because of this you can see genetic variance is there in different species uh, in the same member in different members of same species for example you do not look exactly like your father or mother this is because of this process clear mm. so let's move forward finally in telophase due to hard work of kinato core and non kinato core spindle fibers they finally separate from each other they are far from each other these chromosomes they are far from each other and finally nuclear membrane reappears so up till now this was meiosis 1 final thing is cytokinesis that it will be separated into two daughter cells cytokinesis is same as in mitosis that contractile contractile ring appears which separates it into two cells this is meiosis 1 now what happens in meiosis 2 meiosis 2 is exactly like mitosis the only difference is that before mitosis what happens that dna replicates before mitosis dna replicates but before meiosis 2 dna does not replicate why what is the reason as it already has a uh, homo uh, sister chromatid with it yeah you are right in mitosis the problem is that we only have single chromatid like this right to divide them we need to make a copy of this sister chromatids like this and then we will separate those sister chromatids we will separate those sister chromatids with the help of mitosis but here you can see we already have two sister chromatids here also two sister chromatids we only need to separate them right we will only need to separate them so 
rest i uh, to explain meiosis 2 i will just enlarge this cell clear and let's see what happens it's very easy to understand chromatin condensed to form chromosome the first stage prophase then arrangement on metaphase plate this is metaphase spindle fibers arise mitotic spindle arise this is also happening in metaphase sister chromatids are separated from each other this is anaphase and finally telophase clear and then they are separated with the help of cytokinesis right so this was the complete meiosis now you will watch the complete video of complete animation of meiosis i will not speak you will just try to understand i i hope you will be able to understand this so meiosis one is there crossing over chiasma formation chiasmata formation metaphase anaphase telophase cytokinesis so meiosis 2 that is like mitosis clear so one thing more i would like to explain about meiosis is that here you can see we have homologous chromosomes and in meiosis one meiosis one what will happen we will form two daughter cells and these two daughter cells they will have the chromosomes homologous chromosomes separated from each other and finally their chromatids will be separated right and ultimately after meiosis 2 we will have how many daughter cells in total 1 2 3 4 so here another thing that i will i would like to discuss is that what are the differences between meiosis and mitosis yes what do you think uh, in meiosis there is genetic variation but that doesn't happen in mitosis yeah most important thing is that first uh, let's start with reduction division that chromosome number is halved right for example here you can see how many chromosomes we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and if we consider sister chromatid as a chromosome we will have how many in each daughter cell 1 2 3 so from 6 we have now 3 actually here is 46 and here is 23 so for the sake of simplicity i have only shown six chromosomes here so first thing is that it is reduction division chromosome number is halved second as you have told that there is crossing over which imparts genetic variability another difference can you highlight very easy it forms four chromosomes uh, not chromosome four, four daughter, daughter cells, cells. At the end of meiosis, we have four daughter cells. At the end of mitosis, we have how many daughter cells? Two. Two daughter cells. Easy. Mm -hmm. Any other difference? The cells that undergo mitosis and meiosis, they are different. Mm -hmm. Mitosis occur in all the somatic cells. Yes. Meiosis occur in only precursor sex cells. Of precursor of sex. Pre precursor of gametes. Mm -hmm. The four differences any other difference i think it's complete finally here <coughs> again i would like to mention that there are six chromosome let's say here and here is three so this is this is diploid number of chromosome this is applied number of chromosome clear thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please press the thumbs up button Please support me on Patreon. Please subscribe to my channel and pl please give your precious comments regarding this video. Thank you so much.